right ahead on CCX News, a new school safety plan that would spend millions to improve security. We've heard from all of our districts and safe schools is a top priority. Plus, an unlikely transformation. When people come in, they, they really appreciate, I think, those small little nods to Doyle's. A crystal church now calls a former bowling alley home and a school spotlight with a focus on compassion. CCX News starts right now. Hello and thanks for joining us. House Republicans unveil a plan aimed at keeping students safe at school. Reporter Sonia Goins explains what it could mean for local schools. All parents want to know that schools are doing everything possible to make sure uh, that their facilities are, are safe. Flank with their family members by their side. House Republicans released a plan to keep schools safe. The package is going to encompass about uh, probably about $50 million in fiscal year 19. That money would be used to beef up security at school buildings and to hire more school resource officers. It's going to be huge because what we've heard from schools is they, they want to have uh, the opportunity to make decisions at the local level and to have the flexibility to use the dollars how they see fit. Districts like Osseo already have plans in the works to add more digital cameras and more secure entryways. The Osseo School District has mentioned this specifically. The flexibility with their facilities maintenance money would really go a long ways to helping um, them accomplish their projects. The GOP package also calls for allocated money to hire more mental health professionals. If they're struggling uh, either with mental illness or some other type of challenge that is is inhibiting their success in school, that we have uh, adults in place within our schools to help children through those challenges. While the House plan calls for many security upgrades, it does not include any new gun legislation. We've had some hearings on, on gun legislation already. Uh, we very likely will have more. Um, and as those conversations continue, we hope to find solutions that will actually help prevent these uh, problems from, from happening again in the future. Meanwhile, GOP leaders say the $50 million price tag won't be funded by local property taxes. Rather than having all of the money come from local property taxpayers, which is how the current safe schools levy works, we're going to actually uh, put some state money with it so that districts will not have a property tax increase, but they're going to get more money per pupil. So that's going to help districts like uh, Robbinsdale. At the Capitol, Sonia Goins, CCX News. And DFL leader Melissa Hortman of Brooklyn Park says it doesn't go far enough because the plan does nothing on gun violence prevention. An update now on a home invasion last week in Brooklyn Park that sent two victims to the hospital. Police now say both men are out of the hospital, but they're not providing any useful information. Police believe this home on Brunswick Avenue was targeted, but they're not saying why three masked men broke into the home and fired shots. One victim was shot in the legs and another man sustained a head injury from blunt force trauma. Police are looking for three black males in their 20s but the description is limited since they were wearing masks. We still collected a lot of evidence at the scene, so that evidence will be processed, and we will take that evidence and compare it um, through a variety of analytics to determine if it matches up to potential suspects. So the uh, investigation is far from over. And the investigation is complicated by the fact that one of the victims posted a rap video online from the hospital that could incite retaliation. Meantime, an early morning house fire in Brooklyn Park could have been much worse had it not been for a working smoke detector. The fire started in a bedroom at this home in the 9700 block of Almond Avenue North. A smoke detector woke a man up inside the home and he was able to get his family out of the home safely. Fire officials say the two alarm fire caused extensive smoke damage. It may have started from a space heater. Brooklyn Park got help from four other fire departments. If you've driven down West Broadway in Crystal, you may have noticed a church is now where a bowling alley used to be. Cornerstone Church Crystal says taking over Doyle's Lanes was the perfect fit and Shannon Slatton gives us a tour of what it looks like inside. For more than two decades, Cornerstone Church called a neighborhood school building in Crystal home. They leased out space to different charter schools and it worked. 
For us, it was just perfect timing. Until the church got an offer they couldn't refuse. Beacon Academy made an offer on the building and we sold without having any idea um, through the process where we were going to end up and we ended up here. So the church made their own leap of faith and looked for a new building, knowing they wanted to stay in Crystal. We saw an opportunity to say this establishment in this community that was so important to the community could still be that, but different. Um, and so for us, you know, we bought a bowling alley and we transformed it to a church. Last summer, crews started transforming lanes into space that could still be a gathering place for the community. The Pharisee had invited Jesus for one very particular reason. The church held its first service in September. We don't want you just to be surface level, kind of hang out in and out the doors, but we want you to be connected. You can still see parts of the old bowling alley sprinkled throughout the building, like a part of the sign that's here in the office. We actually were pretty intentional about using some of the wood from the lanes. The church embraced the building's bowling alley history. Wood from the lanes has been incorporated into signs and tables throughout the building. Every family in our church has a, a bowling pin somewhere in their house. The church added more windows and it brings in natural light to the Northwoods themed kids space. Each room kind of has its own identity. Most rooms are multi-purpose. People come in, they really appreciate, I think, those small little nods to Doyle's. The church says around 400 people attend services every Sunday and they are planning for a big crowd for their first Easter hoping more people see how new life can transform an old space. This church is connected to its community, um, and we really, we just love that um, feel that we can offer to people. In Crystal, Shannon Slatton, CCX News. It was 70 years ago this month, the church started by meeting in the Franklin Creamery in Minneapolis. A Robbinsdale family says the future of their food booth at the state fair is uncertain. Delicious potato skins have been served out of the corner of the food building since the early 1980s. The owner started his booth at Duck Duck Days in New Hope. But this past December, the owner, Walt Melanchuk from Plymouth, passed away unexpectedly. His children and their spouses who worked at the booth do want to keep it open, but they must go before a state fair board in April to secure the spot. Still ahead on CCX News, life lessons become an important part of learning. We'll explain in School Spotlight. Plus, Champlain Park's baseball team will build around a strong pitching staff. We'll have a season preview. But first, winter isn't done just yet. A low in the teens is expected on Saturday. We'll be right back. If you're a young person interested in government, Brooklyn Park wants to hear from you. Brooklyn Park officials are looking for high school age students to learn about how government works by taking part in it. You'll be paired up with the mayor or council members and even take an active role in a city council meeting in April. The deadline to apply, though, is Monday. Elementary schools provide the foundation that students will need to succeed in all aspects of life. But sometimes students are taught valuable lessons that aren't incorporated into the curriculum. In today's School Spotlight, Delane Cleveland shows us how a second grader at Gleason Lake Elementary in Plymouth helped inspire the entire student body to support a good cause. Step inside of Gleason Lake Elementary in Plymouth and you'll find a school with an abundance of natural light, artwork on the walls painted by a children's book illustrator, and plenty of smiling faces. It's a calm, engaging, focused learning atmosphere that's inclusive of all children. Mary Magassey has been principal of Gleason Lake for the past 11 years. She says the goal for the roughly 580 students enrolled here is that they learn important academic skills that set the foundation for the future. They are definitely critical thinkers. They have problem solving skills, strategies to deal with real life situations. Along with academics, the students receive lessons that help their social and emotional growth. Growth. How we develop caring, committed students who will be compassionate leaders as they go out into the world is some of the most important things that we strive to focus on here at Gleason Lake. Compassion is a word that's not used lightly around here. For proof of that, we introduce you to second grader Cole McDonough. I do a lot of cool stuff in that class. Cole is a book reading, technology loving eight year old boy, but in his short life, He's endured more than most adults have in their lifetime. Well, it hurt a lot, and it was really hard for my family. Cole was diagnosed with leukemia at the age of two, and over the next several years, 
He had to undergo chemotherapy, dozens of hospital visits, and physical therapy. I don't like other people having to have what I went through. The rest of the Gleason Lake family felt the same way. So at the suggestion of Cole's parents, the school took steps to help. And I said we would, and it kind of uh, turned into something really big. Becky Whitlock is a student council advisor. She helped the school launch a fundraiser for the organization Pennies for Patients. Pennies for Patients is fundraising efforts for Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, where they ask schools to participate in raising as much money as possible to go to research for blood cancers. Cole was one of the faces featured on the national ad campaign. The school set a goal of $3,000. In the end, they more than doubled that goal. I think because it was personal. Cole is one of us here at Gleason Lake. You know, he's the neighborhood kid in, in the face that we see in the hallway. It's the face of a child whose cancer is now in remission, thanks to the treatment he had undergone for nearly half his life. Well, I still have to have a couple checkups just to see how I'm doing, but every time I go, then it moves farther apart. Books, computers, and class discussions are some of the common tools used in education, but at Gleason Lake, it was the experience of an eight-year-old boy that taught students a lesson on life. Our school community just rallied around a great cause and a student here, and I think that's what makes Gleason Lake an outstanding Place. In Plymouth, Delaney Cleveland, CCX News. Cole's family has launched a campaign to raise money for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and we will have a link on our website at ccxmedia.org. Coming up next, we'll take a look at a sweet tasting April Fool's joke. But first, the Totino Grace baseball team will have plenty of new players in the lineup this spring. Jay Wilcox has a preview of the Eagles next in sports. I'm Jay Wilcox with sports. The Champlain Park baseball team will lean on its pitching and defense and hope the offense comes along as the season progresses. Here's Jason Melillo with a preview of the Rebels. Champlain Park should have a strong pitching staff this spring. Outfielder Brady Higgins should be in the rotation along with infielder Michael Euland. The Rebels ace will be senior lefty Max Lovin. He's a steady, he's very confident, um, handles himself that way and uh, it rubs off on the guys. He's a quiet leader, but yet is one that will, if he says something, he'll get the guy's attention in a hurry, but he's just steady, steady, steady every single day. Chetland Park won't have a high-powered offense, so mistake-free defense and solid pitching will be the Rebels' winning formula. Our hitting's not the best, it's not our strongest suit, you know, we don't really have the power guys, we're a little bit of a smaller team, but we got guys that can get on and we have speed, and that's really what's going to work for us this year. We got, we're going to be able to bunt them over and, like you said, get them on, get them over, get them in, and we're going to, we're just going to be winning tight games, I think, and just keeping the short runs and got to be good on defense. For us, yeah, pitching defense. Defense is everything. Uh, our first priority is to play as good of defense and pitch as well as we can. And then I'm confident that we, that we will be able to get the bats going enough to win a lot of games. This team has a good core of returning players, but Coach Corey Davis has had to move some pieces around. Senior Trey Carlson will move from second base to catcher. It's been a somewhat painful transition, but Carlson is all in. Right now, I'm actually, I'm really sore, you know, getting back stretched out. It's a lot different, you know, getting down and squatting, it really works your quads out. And it's, I'll get there, but it's, it's, it'll be a process. Champlain Park made the state tournament last season, and the 2018 Rebels will look to duplicate the success this program has built over the last few years. Jason Malolo, CCX Sports. Champlain Park season opener is scheduled for a week from Saturday, April 7th at Minnetonka. The Skippers do have an artificial turf field, making it more possible that they might be able to play that one. Well, Champlain Park and Totino Grace have met in the section baseball playoffs the past two seasons and our Northwest Suburban Conference foes too. Here's a look at what Totino Grace has in store this season. There's still plenty of competition for spots in the Totino Grace baseball lineup this spring. After graduating 10 seniors from last year's team, guys moving up from the sophomore and JV level will need to step up. Yeah, there's definitely a, some talent in the younger guys because we got a lot of turnover from last year. And I think that the younger guys will be able to step up and other seniors that are filling in this year too. 
Yeah, we'll have some new faces. We got some guys though that have, uh, you know, they put some time in, had some good summers. You know, we got some guys that sophomores going to be juniors that had good summers and are, are really hoping to get a chance to uh, contribute. The Eagles were 7-6 and six in the rugged Northwest Suburban Conference last season and went 2-2 two and two in the Section 5-4A tournament. Among the key returners, third baseman Joey Linders, infielder Daniel Clausen, and pitcher outfielder first baseman Jack Crayler. The Eagles have no one dominant area, but they do have talent spread across their lineup. Um, I think our hitting's pretty good right now. Pitching, we're still kind of working a couple things out. We got, I think, three guys that pitched last year on varsity this year again, but then the rest is kind of just guys whoever wants to compete on the mound, I guess. Uh, I really don't think that we have one overall strength, just pretty even throughout all, all three categories. With April almost here and snow still present on Grace's game field, the players know the season may not start on time. They're trying to make the best of it indoors and even in the parking lot. We kind of know that maybe our first time outside might be our first game, so we're preparing for that inside with uh, live pitching indoors in the cages. It helps a lot, but we kind of know that first time might be our first game, so that's going to be tough, but we're ready to compete for it. Not too bad yet because it's only about week two, but yeah, if it keeps going, it'll be a little tough to just keep sitting inside. For a solid Totino Grace program, the outlook seems to be cautiously optimistic on the diamond this spring. The Eagles are slated to open at Benilde St. Margaret's next Friday, April 6th, weather permitting. They do have some time for that snow to melt for their home opener, which is scheduled for April 17th. That's all for sports. Back to you. All right, Jay, we can't wait. Up next, an April Fool's joke for the senses. And cupcakes that are just for fun when we come back. <laughs> And finally, Mix, a mythical creature with a local bakery that has a strong imagination, and you've got a tasty April Fool's Day tradition. I mean, they're unique. You don't really see them anywhere else, and our customers, it's one of the things that they look forward to because they only come around once a year. Well, she is talking about Nadia Cake's famous unicorn poop cupcakes. The line was nearly out the door Thursday afternoon as the cupcakes made their 2018 debut. This year's lineup of creative concoctions includes bucket of popcorn, bunny butt, bird's nest, and beef lo mein. Nadia Cake's employees have been hard at work getting ready. It's a lot of work, um, a lot of late nights, overnight shifts, early hours. Um, it's one of our biggest holidays of the year, so tons of prep, lots of hard work, but it's a lot of fun for us. And the specialty cupcakes will be on sale now through April 2nd. So if this looks like popcorn to you, April and it Fool, does, right? It really does. <laughs> and a bird's nest, you got to yeah. hand it to them. It's Very amazing. Artistic. Works of art. <laughs> That'll do it for now. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great holiday weekend. We'll see you back here again on Monday starting at 4.